in such a way that Sammy, who's our youngest brother, is the backbone of the family. And my younger brother, middle brother, Baldev, is our hands and legs who controls our moment. And I'm known as to be the crazy head. I just want to be better than yesterday. And believe it, it's just the beginning. God has given me some abilities uh, to do things. And I want to continue to get better on those abilities and to contribute to my family and to my people. The instincts I have to make decisions. One thing I am I'm very good at is making crazy decisions. And sometimes they are bad, but we make it good. The courage is the building block of every quality in you. So be courageous to make that decision in life, to do something better for you, what you're doing already. But I come out with the ideas which are not even talkable for our size of family, and, but I believe in it. I says, if we don't talk about it, we will never achieve it. Business is run as the countries are run. Families are run as the business is run. So the basics are the same. And I worked at a subway store for somebody for, for a little bit of time, as you mentioned earlier. And I slept inside the store for six months and took showers in the, the sinks they had in there and, and opened the store and closed the store myself. Hello everyone, welcome to Punjab today and welcome to our this very unique show, Believers and Achievers. We are sitting with someone who is a believer as well as an achiever. So today I'm sitting with, you know, one of the top entrepreneurs of the country, a Punjabi who has made all of us proud, who started as a first generation immigrant in USA, started with jobs as a, you know, subway retailer and sandwich maker. And now he runs a company which is worth billions of dollars. So today we're going to talk to him and see, you know, what is that drives him? What are the lessons that he has learned in his life? and how he could be an inspiration and what, what our youth can learn from him and how he is supporting, you know, uh, towards building a strong Punjab and strong nation. Welcome, Paji, to Believers and Achievers. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, sir, I will reiterate my question. Uh, you are one of the unique stories of success, you know, uh, you know Punjabi, a first-generation immigrant and building a world-class company, having very diverse set of investments in India, in USA and in other countries also now. So what is the secret sauce of success for you? So I tell you, first I want to thank you for Punjab today to invite me today for having this opportunity to talk about my life and my journey from zero to hero, I would say. Not yet a hero, but uh, will be pretty soon. And I appreciate the time here today. So I would say, because who I am, who I was born, the family, and what I believe in drives me daily, every minute, to achieve these goals I have achieved. There are very core people who played a role in this. I would like to mention their names. It's my brothers, uh, my younger brothers, Baldev Singh Kanga and Yudhvinder Singh Kanga, also known as Sammy Kang. And I myself is Bobby Kang, the CEO of Cargo Solution and chairman of uh, Salson Steel Private Limited, which is our Indian company. Uh, without them, team is incomplete. So we, I define my family in such a way that Sammy, who's our youngest brother, is the backbone of the family. And my younger brother, middle brother, Baldev, is our hands and legs who controls our moment. And I'm known as to be the crazy head, crazy head, you know, who make the mess for them and they clean it up for me. So I would say that is that secret sauce. And I cannot forget my cousin who expired a few years ago. It was very important role to play in achieving what we're achieving in Indian business. Uh, I am a true believer of a team play. Uh, myself, I couldn't do anything. So 
having a good people, a good team, and especially your blood team around you made this success for me. What is today? And believe it, this is just the beginning. Abhi to film baki hai, the trailer hai. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Mr. Bobby Kung, so you know, you say family is your secret recipe. So it means people you are talking about. And uh, you know, and you said that you are the crazy head. So uh, I, I, if phrase, this phrase is coming to my head, the people say that you know, bosses are like kids. They demand things and then people have to fulfill it. So, so what kind of boss you have been or chairman or head have you been to, apart from family, of course, family is part of the core team for, for other people in your organization. So being a head, see, this is the qualities I had that I know what had to wear at what time. So when, when we are in the office, we are professionals. I'm the boss and they follow the orders. I come up with the plan and everybody has a role to play in that plan. And if they play that role very well, then the plan is successful. And I'm the executor of that plan. I put up that plan together. And sometimes I ask their inputs into it and I correct my plans. I'm not perfect, you know, I make mistakes. So when I say crazy head means that I come out with the ideas which are not even talkable for our size of family. And, but I believe in it. I says, if we don't talk about it, we will never achieve it. So let's talk about it, at least try. Maybe we get the halfway, but we will learn the journey. We have the only half path left to travel if we try again. So, you know, that's, that's my focus and that's my goal for the family. Everything I do it, I do it for the family. So, so you set very powerful goals for your people, so which don't let them sleep. No, no, they don't sleep at all. The, the mess I create, they are very much busy fixing those things up, you know, tightening all the bolts. It's like this, you know, it's like a puzzle. You, you ever see those little things? Yeah, jigsaw the puzzles. Kids, puzzles. So I know the end result in my head that is going to a ship who's sailing on a water, but it's scattered in pieces. So I put it, all the pieces there and I tell them to put it together. And each one of them have the abilities and, and, and expertise to do certain things. So I believe in, you know, the business is run as the countries are run. Families are run as the business is run. So the basics are the same. You know, we have a head in the family who has an experience and who tells us what you do in life and what you don't do in life. How can you be successful and how you cannot be successful? So I take the same, same kind of mentality into business. I, you know, I, 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 I went to Senate school and another thing is the schooling also played a big role for me in a part of success because I went to Senate school Kapurthala. Unfortunately, I only did a high school, but that high school was a boarding school, as you know, uh, you know, people comes out of the schools are very grinders and they, you know, you can't get in there unless you are one of them. So I think the schooling also played a big role as the family heritage and the culture. So, you know, I, every mistake I made and I continue learning from it and getting it better day by day, making my decisions. Wonderful. So basically, this is, you know, something, you know, very unique and different. You are saying that, you know, run your business like a family and treat your employees like family members. I think that is what you are trying to say and give them very specific roles. Yes. So I believe in people. My major, major focus is people. So if I'm a partner associated with or guy investing money in me or guys funding my deal, I watch for him first to make sure that he makes money. I could sit here and t say this to you, that I had made a lot of people a lot of money. I've been an asset to them. So I, I look at this thing as a, as a relationship that what I do for somebody else and I expect them to do something for me. 
but I don't ask because in my action I do so much for them, they are always looking for the chance to please me. This is the quality I had, like in 60s or 70s, I could say this in front of the camera, you know, back in those days, people needed a gun to control people. But today, I don't need no gun, but I control people positively. You know, when I say control, don't take it in a negative way. But, you know, I mentor them so much that they are always looking for a chance to prove themselves to me that I got to do something. For so them. you understand their aspirations yes. and you help them fulfill them and they try to prove themselves also. You give them enough challenges that they, they want to prove themselves when you show, give them those challenges. Definitely. You know, each one of employee of mine or, or an executive of mine or vice presidents of mine, they all are capable. I see the capability in them and I give them those challenges and they, prove, they, they, they perform very well on them and very responsibly. And you know, I learned early on in life that how I keep my dis distances between different people. Because it's very important, you know, your relationship with your employees or your relationship with your family. It plays a different role. So when I'm in the office, I'm a totally different guy. When I'm out having a good time with all my employees, I'm a totally different person. So, you know, when I say people, I believe in people, and with, without people, we couldn't do nothing. Only me, come up with an idea, and sit in an empty room, couldn't achieve it, if I didn't have a set of, set of experts around me. I mean, that's very rarely, you know, you know, leaders giving credit to their people, you know, that is such a wonderful quality. So, Paji, I want to understand, you know, you know, starting with one truck, and you know what is the fleet size now? How many people are employed? How many Indians are employed over there? And how many people? Since you have a lot of back-end operations as well as a big steel business, Prabal Steel, Samsung Steels, you run in India. So, what kind of workforce uh, your group has employed currently? So, I, I start with telling you that in 1989, I passed out high school here in India. I was a 19 years old young boy, went on a journey to USA to search of a better future. And I worked at a subway store for somebody for, for a little bit of time, as you mentioned earlier. And I slept inside the store for six months and took showers in the, the sinks they had in there and, and opened the store and closed the store myself. But I was searching for something and then I start working for a bank and I did a a uh, loan deal for a trucking company and I looked at their financials and I saw an opportunity that it does not require a lot of uh, uh, initial investment. So you could basically get truck on a credit and put a body in it and get an insurance and have a contract and start working. So it interests me very well and I start looking into it. So. The thought came in my mind that I need to know about trucking, everything about trucking. So I took a driver license in 1996, and I drove truck for two and a half years myself. Because I wanted to feel how, what trucking is, how roads are, what truckers go through. Challenges on the ground. Challenges on the ground. So every warehouse I went to deliver or a pickup, I made a relationship with the traffic manager, took their information. Back in those days, it was not like hi-fi, you know, I had a, one little notebook, I would keep their contacts and phone numbers and pager numbers and stuff like that. So I collected a lot of data in two and a half years, I made a lot of friends. I went to visit them and then, then I started with four trucks. Then my brothers joined me. Uh, in 1998, I got married. That's really, at that time, my life changed. That one change happened in business-wise at that time. Uh, things start to you know, get better day by day. And then my daughter was born in 1999, and son was born in 2000. The boy is born lucky for us. Since that day we formed, the day he was born, we formed Cargo Solution. Express Inc., which is the trucking company we run in the U.S. 
So he's 21 years old and the company is 21 years old. Okay. So since then we never looked back, four to six, six to eight, eight to 12, 12 to 30. A lot of struggle, believe me, it was not easy. Of course, it's a hard job. Yeah. It's, it's like we, love, we fell down a lot of time, but we never gave up. And, and successfully, you know, when we got over 100 trucks, we see little light in the tunnel. And then after 100 trucks, we were just going after it. We never were non, non-stopping it. And uh, in 19, 2009, when we really got successful in trucking and decided to do something for India, because uh, my father, seven brothers and three sisters. My mother's side is five sisters and two brothers. So you can do we calculation, yeah. you know, it's over 50 cousins, uh, males or females who are looking after me to do something for them. So it was my duty, I thought. And another thought in my head also was to do something for the, my homeland where I was born to create employment, uh, to do something for them. And I came up with this idea. It was in my destiny. I tell you a story how it happens if you ask me about it. Definitely. And I think being such a family person and someone who, is taking a risk, who has taken up onto him, so this is one value the generation, the society This is one value that most of the people should inculcate. We have to do something for our homeland, for people around us, for our families. I think this is one fam it, it important value which is eroding currently in, in current generation, which we are seeing lack in where you see that this is my family, I have to do something for them. I think that is one 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 really the you know, thought that is coming out of whatever I'm hearing. And, and Pajib, what is the current uh, fleet size and how many people are employed in the organization? So what now, are the top lines like? Yeah, now we, we're running about 1,200 trucks and 2,500 tra 2, trailers. 2,500 trailers, all right. And then we have about 1,300 employees. And we, we created 250 employees here in India that who helps the back office, uh, runs back the back, back handle operations. MIS here in and everything. Yes, like the, the billing, the, the shipping orders, or the tracing, tracking, customer service, even accounting we have generated to force here in India to help us. And you know, talking about family, you see, it's, they are the asset for me. And they're my people, they're my blood. Yeah, I mean, I, I have very clear thought in my mind. Even the steel for me is going to the house anyways. I'll find out who has a new furniture or who built a new house. Wonderful. Where did you get the money from? <laughs> I did not give it to you. I wish more people think like that. It will yeah. build for stronger communities, stronger families. So, so was it, you know, uh, Paji, that you always felt that you are meant for bigger things or there was some movement that made you realize that you know you want to do something big or was who was your inspiration if i have to ask see me since i was a kid you know since i've got out of the school i was this guy always never satisfied like you know never happy i was in my life some challenge has to be there even i'm 50 years old now but still I look for challenges because otherwise the life becomes boring and uh, you go on the wrong path. So if you don't, my theory is if you don't stay busy and you don't face challenges every day, your life will become miserable. You will say you're happy, but you're not. You're sitting in a bar or you're doing some wrong thing or you've fallen into wrong people's path because you have nothing else to do. So I believe in that one should stay, you know, busy as much as he can and, and be balanced. Don't go crazy, but be balanced, you know, be balanced, have family time, have time for yourself, for your body, your mind, and, and continue doing the, the right things to, to grow your business. It's not about money. It's about a son of a Punjab Roadways conductor 
My father, who's retired as a Punjab Roadways uh, conductor in Batala, that has given an opportunity in this world to do something. And I feel that this is my job to make my people proud and make them realize that a guy, uh, one kid from a village can do anything, uh, you know, which is possible. I don't know if it's in my destiny. I believe in it. Even if I try to jump in a well, I will find a rope. That's my destiny. So, so you are a resourceful person? I would say I'm lucky. I would say I'm very blessed. I would say I'm uh, nothing else. I could say I'm very blessed. Uh, and you know, one thing I tell you, luck also, you know, when I say I'm lucky, it doesn't mean that I get everything because I'm very lucky. Because once uh, Tiger Woods, you know Tiger Woods is uh, yeah, the, the best, well. uh, the world golf player. Once in a master tournament, he made a 25 footer putt, you know, on his final hole. And somebody in the crowd yelled at him, his lucky putt. And he stood up and looked at the person and said, you know, it took 25 years of my hard work to create that luck. So you create your own luck. You know, so hard work and luck plays a similar role. So if I don't take the step towards uh, to do some hard work, then the luck will not come along. So, so it's a parallel thing. So harder you work, luckier you get. Yes, you, you got it. You hit the nail on the head, yes. Paji, you know, a lot of youth will be watching this video. I just want to, you know, for those naughty kids, you know, because you, know, you said you were always dissatisfied kind of kid when you were growing up. So uh, were you a naughty kid? No, I would not say I was a naughty kid. I was, I was a creative kid that I would always create something. Even if I was a kid, I would create an entertainment system, you know, speakers inside a chati, you know, the kada. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember when I was a little kid, we didn't, we could not afford a boom system, you know, like a sound system, I wanted to hear it. So I, I created uh, this sound system from a small stereo from a car. I wired it up and then I found this old speaker, I put them inside that kada so they can make that boom sound. So I mean, those little in in incidents make me remember that I was always a creative kid even when I was uh, young. Yeah. Yeah. And again, resourcefulness and innovation comes into picture which you have been showing all along. Yeah, when I was in the, the boarding school, I would figure out a way how to be creative, you know, uh, not to get caught <laughs> in my own mistakes. <laughs> you gotta be creative yeah, to yeah. be good. Right? Sanic School Gaburthala is a tough place to survive. I know, well, believe me, we survived very well. That school have taught us a lot of things. So, I mean, I would say lucky, blessed, and hardworking. These are the three things. And then having a good people around me made me successful who I am. Uh, a lot of people say this, that I'm successful. But believe me, inside me, I think... Best is yet to come. Yet to come. You know, I'm still learning from my mistakes. Every deal I do, I learn from it. Because I learn how to negotiate better. How to be that Kirby guy, like ask those dumb questions sometimes, not to be a smart guy, you know? Right. Because sometimes I learn from those people I do deals with, uh, that how they do deals, I learn from them. Wonderful. And every day I learn, you know, even talking to you off stage today, I learned a lot of things. I appreciate that. Yes. I just want to be better than yesterday. That's wonderful. So, Paji, what are the values that drive you? You know, like one thing you said is, I just want to be better than. So, continuous improvement is one thing that drives you. So, what are what are your fundamental values? You know, that drive you towards success and this this continuous need for getting better. What is that? What is the force that is driving you? See, the qualities I have to look at the deal, the IQ I have to look at the future, the look at the whole bigger picture. I don't look at, at the deal at that time. I just give you an example. How would I do a deal? So I look at this Lalit Hotel here in Chandigarh, right? Uh, I heard it was for sale. And I asked about the deal. 
So a lot of people give me negative feed up for about the deal, that this deal is not good. So when there is a negative, I always get curious why there is a negative. So I say, okay, Lalit name is not doing good, so how can I be creative to make the same building in a better way? So I, with the help of some experts in my organization, I came up with this solution saying, if we can pick up this deal for a certain amount of you know, monies we want to invest in, we can change it into Holiday Inns, or we can change it into Hilton, or we can change it into Marriott to make a better place than Lalith. So, I mean, you know, this the qualities you gotta have to look at what is the option to make this plant look more better so you can have a market for it. So I, the answer to your question is the qualities I have, the instincts I have to make decisions. One thing I am I'm very good at is making crazy decisions. And sometimes they are bad, but we make it good. Make it good. Yeah, because unless you don't go down there and, and, and see it yourself, uh, you can never know the reality of the deal. So one time my brother asked me this question. He says, Paji, uh, if 50 deals comes to you, would you say yes to all 50? My answer was yes. I will say yes to all 50s. He said, why? I says, because if I, those 50 cards are not dealt to me, the A is never going to come. So if I don't go look into those 50 deals, I will not find the winner. So if I can just keep throwing it away and throwing it away, but you never know where you're going to find that thing. Absolutely. So I believe in playing the hand every time. If I'm playing poker, I can beat you with two pairs of deuces yeah. because I believe the third one is coming on the deck. And secondly, as you said, you make those even bad deals go good. So that inherent confidence in your own capabilities, you know. So if, if deal is there, you know that you will somehow turn it around, even if it is not as good as initially. That is, that is what it is. And many deals we have done in the past in my life, which we made it good, they were impossible. And we said, okay, we like to do this thing. <laughs> So, so Paji, share one instance of such one crazy deal, you know, which was kind of, you know, impossible. No one believed in you and you somehow, you know, made it. So our numbers pre-COVID was different in cargo solutions. So when the COVID hit, I ordered 1,200 trucks. 1,200 trucks. 1,200 trucks. 1200 trucks. And people were pulling their ha had, uh, you know, hairs off their head, my organization say, what have you done? Things are closing down and what are you doing? I said, just watch, you'll see what's going to happen. Because I knew what's going to happen. The supply chain was going to get disturbed. And it's going to take a minute to catch up and trucking was going to take a boom. And believe it or not, all of those 1,200 trucks, we sold it $100,000 profit on each truck. Amazing. So 1,200 trucks multiply to 100,000. You can do the math. Yeah. So basically roughly 120 million? That's right that. So you have to take me out for a treat then? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. But so what are the values that drive you? Yeah, Vishal, the God has given me some abilities uh, to do things. And I want to continue to get better on those abilities and to contribute to my family and to my people here and abroad, here in India and in, in the U.S. So, Pachi, what are, what are you doing? You know, like, you know, India, our Honorable Prime Minister also talks about that India is becoming a startup hub. So anything you're doing in the area of startups and, you know, if you have any interest in that? Yeah, you see, like in previously when we invested money in India, uh, the state, uh, state of Himachal Pradesh and the central government has promoted a lot of schemes. Uh, they have given us a lot of incentives to put up these steel plants, we have put it. Uh, the, so we took advantage of those, uh, those uh, initiatives and created employment. And similarly now, uh, 
uh, Mr. Modi has promoted these startups, and we are investing money into these startups. We already invested a few million dollars into these startup companies, and we believe in, believe in him, and we see his vision as my vision that the small entrepreneurs need to come up and, and to do bigger things. Mm -hmm. And I think the next, uh, the big economy, everybody in the world look, looking at is India. Wonderful. And Mr. Modi is doing a wonderful job representing the country. He's at a negotiated table at very, very well mannered <laughs> right now in the world, yes. And uh, so let's say if, if uh, today, you know, if I have to ask you that, what are the regrets that you have? You know, you, you were constantly talking about, I made some mistakes. So, you know, what are the regrets and what are the mistakes that you think, you know, others can also learn from your experience so that they can avoid the idea of listening to someone who is successful is to at least, you know, get some lessons, you know, out of it. You know, after, after so long to be a stubborn, I would call myself uh, a CEO, I learned that you should always have a second thought. Now I try to have that second thought. It used to be like, no, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and everybody's going to follow me to do this. So I would say that was not a regret, but I learned in life as this gray hair comes out to be the wise guy that, no, you got to have a second thought. You should listen to others also, listen. Yeah. And you could listen to the other people and have their input into it. I always listened. Believe it or not, I always listened. But my viewpoint was totally different than them. So I looked at the deal at my level and I correct myself time to time. But the, no big regrets, but some things I learned as I got older is that you should have a second thought of you know, before you make that final decision. So, I, I, I mean, you know, to do that, it helped me. My, my, my life changed when I joined the path of meditation. So, if you can share some light on how meditation changed you and, you know, why you started doing it. Yeah, so in 2009, when I came to India to put up the first steel plant, Salson Steel Private Limited, uh, I was totally a different person back then. And my whole family believed in Radha Swami Babaji, and uh, I believed in the path, but was not keen. I, I was like, it's a good philosophy, you know, that my thought was about it. But in 2009, I took it as a challenge that what uh, this philosophy is saying, is it right? So I wanted to, I wanted to feel it to make it right. I was like, no, this cannot be. So I took it as a challenge, believe it or not. And I got on the path and I start meditating. And I felt uh, really good and my life had changed. It's like day to night or night to day. And I'm a totally different person now than I was before. And he helped me Financially or making my deals, it gives me the confidence and that intellect I have now is so sharpened that I can figure it out real quick, the solution of the problems. Wonderful. So meditation helps in, in making better decisions. You see, Vishal, uh, you know, all of these big investment firms in New York, I don't know if you watch TV or the serials, you know, they all have a psychiatric on board, you know. And they all believe in meditation, all of the big guys. And they go quiet for a certain time to before they make their decisions. This is a known thing in New York. I don't know if you know or not. No, that, that's news to me. In fact, you know, I, I think I would start, I always wanted to, but somehow I missed it. So I think I should start meditating. This is one lesson I'm taking out of this conversation. Yeah, so I mean, I deal with those lot of those New York investment company guys. and. I went and visited their office and I was surprised to see they have people on staff who teach meditation and the art of being decision maker and to take that moment of quiet themselves in themselves in a room so they can go through their mind before they make the decision. 
So, I mean, I think uh, meditation is very important for you to create that balance, which I didn't have. You know, I had that impulsive personality, you know, like, ping, that personality. But I think meditation helped me to mellow down and to think about before I make the final decision. And uh, I made very wonderful decisions uh, after I got onto the path. And I continue enjoying it. And it gives me power also, it gives me energy, it gives me positiveness, it gives me that I have to do more for the society. I'm here for, for a purpose. Wonderful. To do a good cause for the community. Paji, recently, you know, our new steel minister announced that, you know, they want to double the capacity of uh, steel manufacturing in India in the next eight years. And Prabal and Sensor already becoming a major player. What are your expansion plans in India and abroad? Yeah, Vishal, uh, recently we have purchased another plant here in Nangal called Agarwal Steel. Okay. Uh, Sixty days ago we took the, the possession of the plant and we closed the deal. Uh, our goal for Prabal TMT, Saria and Salson Steel Private Limited is to make a pan-India brand. So we are trying to enter into NCR market, which is Noida, New, uh, New Delhi and Gurgaon market, uh, because there's a lot of demand there. Right now our possession is only in northern India, Punjab, Himachal, Jammu and Kashmir, and some part of Haryana and Tri-City. Uh, right now we are producing about 22,000 metric tons of rebar, sariya, okay. which we call the best quality sariya in Punjab and Himachal, Jammu Kashmir. And last month we broke the record of sales of 22,500. And we celebrated uh, taking the tour to Thailand. We took 200 dealers to Thailand Wonderful. to celebrate that. Wonderful. So we are very proud so far what we have done in a small uh, time period. But our plans are to make this as a pan-India brand okay. and take one step at a time. Okay. Not in India, but the demand of steel is, is more out in, in, in other parts of the world also. And we are focusing on certain parts of the other, wo other world also to put a steel plant. So what are the global expansion plans, any countries or any green field projects that are coming up? Yeah, you see, my destiny took me down to Armenia. Uh, uh, some people, diplomatic people over there were looking to buy an existing mill and they wanted my consultancy and they called me up. I got hooked up with the common friend and they called me up to look at the plant and when we looked at it, they wanted a uh, a lot of money for the plant. And by talking to them, we came with an idea to put a new plant in Armenia, in which we finalized the decision and we are going full-fledged after that. Uh, you know, our goal is to 12 months, we, we would have the plant in production. Wonderful. The capacity of that plant is going to be about 18,000 metric tons per month okay. of rebar. We're going to start with rebar and then we will go pipes, angles, channels, garters. That is so far entering in the Gulf. And that will serve the market of Iran, Southeast, Turkey, even up to UAE, we can sell it. Oh, yes. I'm very excited about the project. That, that, it sounds amazing and I'm sure there will be a lot more projects coming up. Paji, you know, uh, for our viewers, what will be one closing statement from your side? You are such an inspirational figure. What would be one closing statement for them? So I would say to the viewers, especially to the young people out there, that courage is the building block of every quality in you. So be courageous to make that decision in life, to do something better for you, what you're doing already. All right. Thank you, Paji. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you.